Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'll teach you how to make this crystal in Blender and Substance Painter. Let's start. First of all, we need to do exactly the same process as we made in my previous video, the rock video. You need to create some random shapes this way to make like the crystal base or the block out. You can add some loop cuts like this one. We can use proportional editing to make the crystals look like this shape. Okay, we can add some extra loops to this shape, for example, in the middle and scale it along this Y axis and Z axis. So we can give this like a gem shape. We can play with the vertices, pressing GG G two times. Okay, we have the base of lockout. I'm going to cut the base to make it even each other so I'll move it down a little bit like this then select everything apply all transformations with ctrl a then go to edit mode selecting everything and use your bisect tool drag a line then here in bisect select Clear inner and fill. So we have all the base in the same position like this. Perfect. Now let's prepare this object for sculpt mode. Select one of them, then go to the wrench, add modifier, generate and remesh. Then increase the voxel size or decrease the voxel size, for example, to 0.4. I think we have good uh, density here to sculpt. I'm going to apply smooth shading. Remember, I have here 1 million triangles to sculpt. This is a good amount since, since this is only one object. We are going to have maybe 1 million per gem. So we may have here 14 million triangles. So make sure you use here a voxel size enough for your PC. If you can handle that, you can go even higher here or your blender will crash. Well, once you have one of those gems with the remesh modify applied here, select everything and press Ctrl L or go to object, 
link transfer data and copy modifiers. Well, as you can see, uh, we don't have 13 million triangles because some of those small rocks uh, doesn't have the enough, enough size to have that amount of polygons. So you can see we have only 89K. So we can increase even more the voxel size. I'm going to use 0 0.2 here. Select everything, press Ctrl L and click button. We increased the polycon to 20 millions. I think I can use this value, but for example, those small pieces, I think don't have enough, enough quality to sculpt. So we can increase, uh, especially for these small pieces, the voxel size. So I'm going to select them. Okay, I think this one too. Yeah. All of those small rocks or crystals. Then isolate them, select one of them, and maybe I can use 0 0.1 for this. Uh, yeah, I think we can use 0 0.1 for, for all of these gems. So select the select the gem with 0 0.1 vert voxel size. So you can see this one, select everything. And again, transfer data. Okay, now I think we have enough quality to sculpt. So, select everything and up press Alt C, convert to mesh, or go to object, convert to mesh. Well, all of these crystals are ready to be sculpted. Okay, now we can start sculpting our crystal. Select one of them, then go to sculpt mode and here start sculpting. I think I can use the same method we made in the last video, the rocks video. So I'm going to use a scrape brush using our brush. Remember all of these are in the description, even my brush set that you can buy in the description. But if you cannot, you can use the free version. I'm going to decrease the spacing just to have more density in my brush here. And you can start polishing your corners here.
right? Here I have the sculpture. I think it looks very good. But I'm going to duplicate one of these rocks to the other side. As you can see here, we don't have a small formation or medium formations as we have in the other sides. You can see here, here, and here. So I'm going to duplicate one of these rocks. For example, this one, pressing Shift D. Then click and press G, Y to drag, or depending in which location is your gem. Then press S to scale, Y, and minus one to invert this object and position it like this. You can play with the size, maybe, I think. I think it can be here. We have some isolated gems, so it will not be a problem. Okay, we are not going to be remeshing all of these gems into one as we made with the rock, because um, we may have some problems problems when baking these in Substance Painter. So this time we need to have all of those interiors made. To avoid some baking problems for example if we remesh all of this and make only one formation then this one again maybe some of these faces are going to be projected over this face so having this separated like this as individual objects um, are going to be they are going to be baked only itself so this face for example won't be projected over this other gem face so Again, if we have all of these merged, for example, this is a single object, maybe some of these faces are going to be baked here. This can work for uh, rocks and other formations, but for this it cannot, because we have a lot of um, interior faces. You can see this triangle here inside with all of this depth. Um, all of these can be bad baked. Because all of those faces are going to be project over over all of those faces and again each other. So having different objects as this will help us to avoid objects being project over other objects. I'll explain that later. But okay, we have the base gem here. You can add more details like uh, some dents and for example I don't know, we can add maybe some cuts here, for example, like this. You can play with this, but this time I want this object exactly as it is, like this, without any other details. So, okay. As we duplicated one of these rocks, as you can see here in face orientation, if we apply all of these scales, one of them are going to be red, this one. So, select this. Uh, red gem, go to edit mode, select everything and press Ctrl N, invert and regard calculate normals, then go, as you can see here now it is blue, we cannot see the color at long distance because we have a lot of polygons here, but we already convert these to blue, so all of the normals now, if we apply transformations, are correct. We don't have red parts. So perfect. We have the high poly. Then as we are going to be using separated objects instead of only one mesh as we made with the rock in the past video, we have here a lot of small rocks. So go to your, so move all of these to your high poly folder. You can create one. Then here we are going to rename all of these as crystal underscore high. As I commented in the past video, I'm going to be using my add-on, this one. It is not my add-on, but I'm using this one. This add-on will be in the description below. It is free, so you can use it for your project. So type here, crystal, then replace names. As you can see now, we have a lot of objects called the same, only the difference are the numbers. Then here in suffix, type underscore high and add suffix. You can do this manually, you can select one of your rock and type the names like this. Uh, it doesn't matter, just will take you some extra time. Then select all of the objects and press Shift D to duplicate and click without moving the objects. Then press M 
and move your objects to your uh, model low folder or simply drag them like this okay now select everything and you need to sorry select everything inside the low folder and now you need to replace the underscore high and the numbers to low again you can do that manually or simply use the pattern search here high 0.001 and replace all of those uh, selections with low then search and replace perfect now we have two objects here two folders one of them are going to be the high poly which are going to be projected over our low poly this but first we need to optimize the low poly so work Right now we need to start working only in the low poly folder. So hide everything else. Okay, let's continue. Remember we're working only in the low poly folder. So we need to decimate all of these um, formations to make them low poly. You can manually read topology uh, everything, but that will take you a lot of time as and as these are static meshes, we don't need to use retopology topology for this. So we can only decimate in triangles, the same as we made with the rocks. But again, if you want to do retopology, topology, you can. So select one of the objects and add a modifier called decimate. Then here we can decrease the size to, for example, 0 0.01. Okay, it took some time to decimate. But we have here some decimation. So now select everything and object link transfer data and copy modifiers. It will take some time. Okay, now we have all of the decimation. It is not enough, but now we need to select everything and press Alt C, convert to, or go to object, convert to mesh. It will take some time again. Okay, now we have all of the decimations made. This is not enough again, but it will help you to work faster now with the next level of decimation. So again, select one of those gems and add another decimate modifier. So here you can decrease the polycount faster than before. So maybe let's use something. Let me hide everything else. Let me use maybe something very low poly here something we something keeps the silhouette the silhouette of the gem so maybe this value can work let me modify this a little bit okay maybe less yeah this this is fine uh we are going to be fixing this shadow later but select now everything Select your uh, decimate modifier object, hit this one, and press Ctrl L, copy modifiers. Okay, we have a lot of decimations here now. And this gem is only 1k triangles. So this is a very good density object. You can of course increase the decimate if you want more polygons in your gem or crystal, but I think it, it is very good. Now select everything and press Alt C and convert to mesh. Now if we go to edit mode, as you can see, we have this optimized for games. So let's fix this shadows here. Select one of the problematic shadows, sorry, vertex. This one, for example, and a slide pressing GG, G two times. And uh, we can move this here. I'm going to activate this first, how to merge. So when we drag a vertice, a vertice over another one, it will be merged automatically like that. Yeah, maybe that one cannot be merged. For example, here. Try to, you need to move all of those very close vertices to avoid those shadows. Okay, we don't have much problems in this object, I think it looks very good. 
Yeah, it looks very good indeed. Here we have another small issue. So, move them. Perfect. Let me see if we have more problems. I think it looks very good. Yeah, I'm going to be removing those bottom faces because we don't need them. If we place this rock in a game level, uh, we are going to position them like this. So, the bottom part is not necessary for this case. So, select everything, go to edit mode and use face here. Then go to x-ray view and select only the bottom part. Yeah, this may be a problem. But we, I'm going to be using the same method we may, we used in the past video. So select everything, go to mesh, bisect, and drag a line just something like this, a little bit over the um this red line. So we can cut this like this. Then uncheck fill, and we have all of the base separated. Perfect. You can add a base uh, or something else, but we are going to be leaving this uh, crystal formation just like this, since this is not going to be visible on camera. As you can see, if you add this over a, a ground, for example, into a mine, a cave or something else, uh, the, this is not going to be visible because the player will be will be moving like this. <laughs> okay, that's I think that's obvious. So, we have the base cut. Perfect. Now we need to do UV unwrapping. So, to do UV unwrapping for this gem, let's start with the biggest gem, this one. Then go to UV editing here, and if you press U, you will have this weird formation. So, you need to, you can do this, Cut this uh, gem in the middle, like this, following those sharper um, sides. If you press now um, Mark Seam here, or go to Edge Mark Seam, I have a shortcut with it in my keyboard. So now if you unwrap, you will have two faces, and this is correct. You can use this for UV unwrapping. If you want to save some time, you can use uh, again the bisect tool and drag a line in the middle, but uncheck this time everything, and you can make here a cut and mark a seam. And if you unwrap, you have this cut in the middle. But I I, I don't want to use this because we are going to be increasing not too much, but we're going to be increasing the polycon. So simply just. Add some seams here. I'm not going to be fi fixing this shadow because that's not visible to the camera, so it's not necessary. Okay, perfect. And do the same with all of those gem formations. You can hide them, go to this filter panel and select this display. Then you can hide those already made, already finished, ungrabbed objects. So. Let's continue with more. Okay, for those smallest rocks, like this, we don't need to add a cut, just simply press U and, and unwrap it. They will be projected like this. Okay, perfect, we have all of the crystals um, UV unwrapped. To show them, as you can see, if we press Alt H, uh, they, are not, they are not showing up. So, click here in the display and press Alt and click. Sorry, press Shift and click. Perfect. So all of these rocks are UV unwrapped correctly. 
apply all transformations. So we make sure the center of all of the crystals are in this world center. So now go to edit mode. Um, let me check if we have duplicate overlapping vertices. So I'm pressing M to merge by distance. We had one, this is fine. We had only one. So make sure now you have zero, of course. Perfect. Now go to UV editing and select everything. And you can use the blender by default packer. So press control P and here everything like this, pack. Okay, this is the most easiest way to pack all of those faces UV unwrapped in Blender. But of course you can do you can use this, but as, as I recommended in my last video, you can use the UV Pack Master 3 add-on. This is a paid add-on. It's not uh, a cheap add-on. But if you want to save some time for future projects and make some more complex UV unwrapping process, you can use this add-on. This is very easy to use. Just simply here, I'm going to be adding a margin like 0 0.005, then normalize scale. This will give priority to those biggest faces. For example, this is biggest uh, gem and will decrease some priority for smaller pieces. And then heuristic search. This will make infinite UV unwrapping and it will be optimizing the texture, the texture density a lot. As you can see here, if I press pack, this will be giving us new results every some time. This number is the percentage of texture use. So this time we are, we are using 75% of the entire image. If we give some time, it will be increasing this number, not too much, but something possible. But now we have all of these unwrapped and packed. If we go to select, select overlap, we don't have any select vertices like this. If you have some of them, it means that you have some um, islands overlapping each other. For example, if I position this, all of those um, vertices are overlapping. If you select here, overlap, you can see they are overlapping. So to fix them, just simply move the island like this, or simply just move the vertices and avoid they are overlapping. Okay, perfect. If I'm going to shading and add a new material, I'm going to call this crystal underscore matte, and I add a texture, image texture here, and I'm going to be using a checker map, this, then go to your viewport shading and select everything, press Ctrl L and link materials. You can see the textile density here. This is very good. We have a good textile density. All of the rocks um, are looking the same each other. As you can see the squares are very proportional each other. But if you want to change this value, for example, you want to give more priority to small objects, select everything, go to edit mode. For example, if you want to give more priority to these small, to these small rocks, um, you simply select them. Of course, this is using the add-on. I already showed you how to make this without the add-on. So, scale it, something like that. So now we're giving priority to those rocks. These they are small, sometimes the software, the add-on, may decrease a lot of the quality. If you, if you want to give them more quality, simply do this. Now, if you select everything, as you can see, we broke the, the UV packing. So again, go to the add-on if you have UV pack master. Now this time we are not going to be using normalize. Okay. So we don't, we are not going to be using this one. So uncheck them. If you have checked this, uncheck and use heuristic. I'm going to increase the margin again and press pack. As you can see now, it is packing uh, different. The small rocks have um, bigger squares. So that's perfect. Okay, we have the crystals packed. Make sure you have all of these triangulated. So press Ctrl T to triangulate them. 
so you can see some of the faces were not triangle at first so make sure you have them you can use the quad metal here to fix it alternate if you have some deformations but that's perfect very good select everything go to select overlap here and if you don't have um orange versus that's correct okay we have the crystals low poly optimized let me try to add some normals here maybe very normals let me see how it looks like now this time it won't work let's keep this just like this you can of course use a uh, smooth by angle if you want if you want some sharper um angles like this that will give um more realistic look to the corners but you need to do something uh you need to use a different method uh to seam this you need to cut all of the sharp angles like this instead of the method we used but because if you give uh, this sharper corners to substance painter you may have some weird baked uh, corners so i always prefer to use this method which is everything is smooth because with the normal mac baked uh, all of that will be fixed automatically okay let's export this select everything go to file export fbx select the folder you want to you want to use to export and here select limit to select objects here select mesh and apply transform that's all rename this as crystal low perfect now go to the high poly select everything this time i'm not going to be using uh color id so select everything go to file export fbx and we use the same preset this time this will be called low sorry hi okay this is export and all of this is fine now let's go to substance painter okay i had to record all of this process because i forgot to press start recording so no problem let's do this again uh go to substance painter go to file new here select the low poly fbx then make sure you have the template like this select template only document resolution 2k and everything similar perfect then okay i'm going to discard this because that was my fault so we have the crystal low poly version imported so go to the baking cross down there here in this paper select the high poly crystal then here in output size uh, select 4k you can use 8k if you want here in mar max frontal distance i'm going to be moving this until you don't see red faces as you can see we don't have red faces anymore only those bottom red faces but that's not necessary to fix since we don't have the base of the low poly because we removed all of the base that's why we have red faces there okay so here in match you need to select by mesh name it will it will be it will say to substance painter to bake only the crystals uh itself for example this blue crystal will be baked only in this translucent crystal so that's why we made all of these um renaming process as you can see here we have the zero 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 one low and zero zero one high substance painter will bake only this high rock into this low rock and um for example if we have those two crystals close each other this uh rock information won't be baked into these faces so hope that makes sense it is very easy to understand but sometimes can be difficult so make sure you have here match by mesh name okay uh, then uncheck id map we are not going to be using this then in curvature here select only same mesh name this will do the same um here in ambient occlusion uh we keep this exactly as it is you can use say uh, self occlusion again only the same mesh name 
but we don't need this for ambient occlusion because we want shadows. For example, as they are a one crystal formation and we are not going to be separating all of these small pieces into different crystals, we need to keep everything like this. Because if you select all the same mesh name, uh, it means that if you have those cavity parts, they won't have shadows. So I'll show you later, but this time, this time I need this like this only. Okay, then, then bake. Okay, let's back to painting mode and we have the low poly baked into our, sorry, we have the high poly baked into our low poly. And we have the crystals baked. Let's save this project. Okay, if we go to um, ambient occlusion here, in mesh maps, you can see we have shadows here. It means that if we uh, separate this crystal to a single crystal, we will have the shadow in that crystal making no sense, like as we don't have the other pieces, that shadow will be weird. So to remove this shadow, if you want, you need to go to the baking and here isolate only uh, ambient occlusion. So here in ambient occlusion, you need to select here in ignore back face by mesh name and self occlusion only by mesh name. So if you bake now, as you can see, we don't have ambient occlusion. All of those single crystals are individually baked, so we don't have shadows. That's cool if you want to separate the crystals to small pieces, but we want this time only one formation. So I want shadows here, because if we don't have shadow, shadows there in those cavities, that looks quite bad. So again, go back to the default value and bake again. As you can see now, we have shadows, but we cannot separate the crystals. Okay, perfect. Now we start texturizing this crystal. I'll be using my smart material. Um, this is in the description below if you want to use this material. It's a stylized base material I made, but if you have an older version of Substance Painter, and if you want to learn how to make this material in your Substance Painter version, version since you may not be able to um, download and import my material to your Substance Painter version, version if it is older. So I'll give you in the description below a link to my last video in the part where I teach you how to make this material from scratch. This is a very simple material, but if you want to learn how to make this from scratch, then go to that video. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's start texturizing this crystal. I think I'll be using a base color, something purple, maybe like this. So maybe something purple like this now. Yeah, this looks very good. I'm going to increase in the base here, the sharp edges to make it pop out a little bit more and increase the levels, okay, not too much, but something. I don't want them to look too much like this, so I'm going to add a filter here and blur, and increase a little bit of blur, not too much, something soft, okay. Then here my mid edges, edges, I want to increase the curvature a little bit too. Maybe increase here some, some levels, okay. I'm going to decrease the opacity, just to make it look not too much. Okay, then I'm going to do the same with the big edges. I'm going to increase the value a lot and use only those huge and big curvature areas. Okay. Okay, that's a good base. We have the base of the crystals. I don't want to add too much noise to my faces because I want them to look quite clean. Okay, uh, here I'm going to play with the baked environment. 
here in light. Let me try something. You can increase the light. Make it pop out a little bit more. Like this. You can increase also the shadows to make the bottom part darker. Okay, I'm going to add here some gradient in this color, position, and maybe let's try something blue. Let me try some different blending modes. Okay, this blue purple looks good. I'm going to duplicate this gradient. Um, move it bottom. And I'm going to maybe use another color here and increase the position. Something like this. Let me try a different color. Just to make some gradients. That's quite interesting. It's an interesting gradient. Maybe we can play with the base color again. Okay, this looks very good. I like this color shading. I'll be modifying this entire color, color look later, but as a base, it looks fine. We can use some emissions to this for these crystals so go here to texture set settings and here in channels add emissive we need to increase uh, in this shader settings the emissive intensity just something like maybe four then go to display settings and here activate post process uh, post processing effects so here we need to enable I'm going to enable bagnet thickness on the just because and here in glare you need to enable glare select a bloom shape you can decrease a little bit the luminance and for example we can add a gradient with some lights here i'm going to be using the blue gradient duplicate this and enable emissive and here in emissive use just the color uh, disable the color and use only emissive for this and you can play here with the with a gradient let me try some blur yeah blur may not work for this okay let me try some different colors Okay, we have the emissive. I don't like too much the result because this is covering all of the crystals. So I want to give um, this emissive look only to certain faces. So maybe I can use here in the, my main folder a black mask and then I baked hate. No, I didn't bake hate. So I'm going to bake hate, the hate map. So let's go back to the baking mode. And here's here select the hate and bake. Okay, this will give us some faces information. As you can see here, we have some faces information. So let me try to use hate here. So in the main mask, add a fill, and here type hate, and use the hate map baked from your crystal. Okay, let me add f levels and let me try things. Okay, let me hide them and try something different. Just to try, just to test. Uh, 
maybe curvature. We can invert this. Okay, this looks quite interesting, but I don't like the color mixing. So let, let me add a filter here to this main folder called Hue. Oh, sorry, HSL Perceptive. Then here select only emissive and we can tweak the colors here. Yeah, maybe not. Okay, I think the thickness, the thickness mask may work. So here I added into my emissive folder a fill thickness map. Then in levels, made something like this. I think this may work. I'm going to duplicate this folder and invert this selection. I'm going to invert these levels and play with this. Maybe we can add some different color to the borders. Maybe. Cortis value intensity will depend uh, of your render program. If you are using this crystal in Substance Painter or in Unity, in Unreal Engine, in Blender, wherever you want. You need to tweak these values to have some shining and bloom parts in your engine, increasing the bloom or increasing increasing the intensity of the of the emissive parts. So there is nothing much we can do here to the texture because all of these modifications, if I export this map like this it won't be a different if I export this like this since all of these settings are only visible for Substance Painter as you can see here Emissive are always some textures quite complicated to work with so you need to try a lot of things until you find the result you're looking for even like that it looks good without those just like slightly emissive parts there. Yeah, I think I'll remove this or maybe decrease the intensity a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Nah, I'm going to hide this. I want my rock like this only. I'm going to remove this. Again, all of this is try and error. Okay, let me increase the ambient occlusion a little bit. Just to give it more shadow. Okay, let me duplicate uh, the sharp edges. I'm going to Ctrl C this and put this on top because I want to test some different levels here. Okay, I want to give some exaggeration to this. Maybe like this. Okay. Then I'm going to add a paint. Um, no, I'm going to make this, put this into a folder and add a black mask. And now I'm going to paint, be painting here with low opacity. Some of the corners I want to be sharper, as you can see. Okay, very good. You can change the color even. You can play with opacity and with blending modes until you find something interesting for you. Okay, looks good for me. Here you can see the difference. This is not too much, but that can work. Okay, let's tweak this division to make it look brighter or not. We can also tweak the colors here. Trust me, this filter, division, this is a very simple uh, filter. You only add here a white mask 
only with color and here change the blending mode to di divide and that's all with this simple filter you can change the entire look of your models like this you can see this is very awesome it looks very good only with that simple layer as you can see here this is very good so again uh, i explained how to make all of this material in my last video the, the link in the description below and if you don't want to make this but you have um the la my same substance painter versions this is 2024 version you can simply download this um base material and directly import this to your project wow the differences are very incredible with this filter you can play with this and make different crystals colors for your game you can use this color you can make some other parts like this this is very incredible i cannot even decide what color i want i like this one i like this one this is very good i think i'll be using this uh blue purple crystal i love the result of this I'm not sure if Vivision works with Emissive. Maybe yes, maybe not. Oh, this is too much. Oh, it works also for this. Wow, incredible. Look at this. This changed a lot. Your models. So trust me, this is impressive. You can even change the emissive color easily like this. I'll be using that color. Yep, I like this result. Okay, we have our crystal finished. It looks very good for me. Of course, you can try a lot of different things, a lot of different colors, a lot of different rock formations. And all of that, you can add even more details, some extra crystal faces here you can use a crystal you can use a crystal texture to give more uh, va variation to your faces instead of them um, looking that flat um, you can play you can play as you want but this is my result very simple result for the tutorial but a very good result so let's export all of these textures to blender again so go to file export textures and i'm going to be using the same preset we made in the last video is this one if you want to make this only simple follow these colors as you can see the normal map goes here the base color here just simply drag them and make this similar export preset so i'm going to i'm going to go to settings i'm going to select only base color metallic roughness normal and emissive okay but first here select the blender pvr export we made um select this then let me use png depending on the project uh egg bit plus the dithering and here in size i'm going to be using 4k dilatation infinite and that's fine let me search the folder where i want the textures they are going to be here and export. Okay, back here in Blender, we need to duplicate this low folder, duplicate, and move all of this to a new folder called, for example, Crystal. This will be our prop. Okay, select everything and press Ctrl J to join all of this into a single piece and call it just Crystal or whatever you want then go here to shading uh delete this checker map press ctrl shift t uh if you don't have this feature simply go to edit preferences add-ons and here type node wrangle here we have the add-on just enable this then you press ctrl shift t now go, your, go to your textures make make sure you have these correctly named so blender can understand all of these 
crystal underscore mat corresponds to this material. So select everything and apply them. As you can hear, we have, as you can see here, we have the rock, the crystal, but we need some emission here. So increase the emission level. Maybe let's use 10 and we have emissions. You can increase this or decrease this. As you can see, we don't have some, we don't have lure here. So go to composition, compositing, use nodes. And here in the middle, let me add glare and this will be bloom. You can decrease the threshold, sorry, the, the main, mix maybe to minus 0 0.9 something like that then if we go here to this viewport shading uh, viewport uh, we enable the world and then here um, compositor compositor always and we have no blur this is too much we need to decrease number to maybe minus 0 0.99 you can play with those values and even decrease the strength this is too much maybe 12 we have 12 we increase now this value and we have more bloom as you can see here perfect we have our crystal you can modify the you can modify the the shadows and all of those things to have a good render as you can see here we can we can increase shadows we can add extra shadows and all of that you can play with the hdr you can give a you can make a background for this put this crystal into a cave uh also use curves you can play with whatever you want as you can see here depending the project you are making you can use also chronos pdr neutral increase or decrease the exposure, the gamma, the contrast, and all of that. Okay, we have the crystal made. I'm going to call this crystal, and this is ready to be exported. But we need to first position this space into the world center. So select maybe one of those um, bottom edges, just like this, and press Shift S and cursor to select it. Maybe select this one to make sure the cursor is in the in the center. Maybe yeah, that can work. That can work. Uh, then press select uh, your object and press Control Shift Alt C. Set origin to 3D cursor. Then press Shift S cursor to world ori origin. Then press again Shift S and selection to cursor. As you can see now, we have this crystal positioned exactly into the world center. So when you place this uh, crystal in your game, um, and you position them this into your game ground, as you can see here, this will be positioned into the ground correctly without having extra bottom parts. That's cool, we have crystal. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, give me a like, subscribe if you want more tutorials. You can give me some feedback in the comments if you didn't understand some parts so I can reply you and help you. If you want some cert certain videos like, I don't know, please do a chess tutorial, I want to know how to make chess in a stylized way, please type that in the comments and I'll be reading you. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you learn and see you next time.